was a bit wary, I'm sure of it. But um, yeah, I think oh, sorry, he's delighted. That only went live just now. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Uh, for some reason. <laughs> All right. So so it's live now. It's live now. So we'll have okay. to move around a bit. Sorry, we're having okay. technical issues. But <laughs> <laughs> so we were just talking about how we, uh, myself and Cormac met um, many years ago. I saw his work in the Hallwood Gallery and then you joined the Doorway Gallery about 10 years. You're with us 10 years now, I think. And then you had the first show in 2012 with your sister, Katrina. And yeah. So, yeah, it's in the blood, isn't it? Your whole family have been artists, really. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we were, um, you know, my dad was a painter and a teacher and um, <clears throat> Katrina became an artist first, um, just again saying happy birthday to her again. Hi, uh, hey, hi there, Cormac. Yes. Uh, hi, Katrina, happy birthday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she was an artist, she actually went to art college first and I, I followed in her, in her footsteps, but... Um, yeah, he, he was great inspiration for both of us, definitely. Uh, you know, it was, we were surrounded by his paintings uh, as kids and, you know, visiting artists would come to the house and it was, you know, it was exciting. So we got a, we got a real feel for, for art from a very early stage. And um, it was just part of life, I suppose. It was part of, uh, we drifted into it and it became, became part of our lives as well. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's... Uh, and would you say that you knew from an early age that you were going to be an artist? Um, yeah, I was. I mean, I was always drawing. I was drawing first, and um, you know, I was. I was probably the kid that was, you know, asked at school to do the uh, the realistic posters of everything, and um, the teacher would always pick up my painting. Oh, no, can you can we all start drawing a bit more like this? <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> Um, so it was, it was, it was there. I was always, I was, I enjoyed drawing, and I, I gradually got less interested in everything else. You know, drawing kind of took over, and um, you know, and became like a, a form of expression, I suppose. And it was, it was always easier to at school, you know, to art and anything creative for me. Um, so I, 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 from an early stage, I was always heading that direction, um, and then it led to painting gradually. Gradually led into painting. And have you uh, have you got quite a strict regime where you you go into the studio every day, or are you quite strict on your schedule on how you approach? Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose you have to develop you develop a discipline gradually. Um, you know, uh, I have to give it a certain amount of time for it to, 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 to for you know just to sort out ideas and for a uh, you know larger paintings take time. I, I tend to put on lots of layers of paint. So you build it up over long periods of time. And uh, yeah, you have to give it you have to give it a lot of time. So you eventually, you know, you um with, with having the studio, I'm lucky to have a studio. I love uh, right your studio. <laughs> yeah. Great. It's great. I mean it's it, it I mean I for years it was it was um you know it was renting places and, and rooms in the house and uh, so to have a place where you can just literally make mess and um yeah, but that's a fantastic liberation for any artist, and you can use big works or small works, or you know, storage is a great problem for artists as well. We tend to accumulate a lot of bits and pieces over the years, a lot of art um, as well. So yeah, it, it, you do. You, I suppose you do have to develop a, a routine. You have to because you're you're you know you're your own boss technically. Um, so you you have to sort of get some kind of discipline. Um, I mean, having said that, I'm not a nine to five uh, worker in many, in that respect, I, 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 I can work at night or I can work early in the morning or, you know, I, I you do so tend to, 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 to. What what you prefer to do, does it matter if it's light or night, light, light or day? Or? Yeah, yeah, it depends. And I mean, it depends too. You could be on a run of, of paintings. You could have, be having a great, you know, uh, just a run of great work uh, where you feel everything is falling into place and you just go with that and that could, that could take you going. That could keep you going for weeks, and then gradually, uh, I'd stop then and start maybe going off drawing or, or building up ideas again. And um, so it kind of comes and goes. Really, it ends up and you, you end up getting a, certainly you get a run of inspiration. Where uh, you know I'd be in the studio all, all day, every day, if I could be. And, and so, how how's the lockdown then? Um, was it affected <laughs> your your whole working process? 
Yeah, well, it's it's changed everything because the kids are here. You know, suddenly the family are are here, and uh, the whole school regime, which you, you kind of live your life by, is gone. Uh, so suddenly you're um you know you're having to to, to do your homeschooling and your uh, all that work uh, and bits, you know, but and the kids are there, they're around. So I kind mm. of abandoned them um, any any <laughs> chance of doing normal. He came to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just late, maybe late at night I can <laughs> sneak yeah. in there and get some work done but it, 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 it's an odd one really because um, you know we're so isolated as artists uh, but it's you kind of it's a deliberate isolation really you do you do isolate yourself you have to work on your own a lot of the time and um, so this is different this is a, a, a very different kind of isolation um, <laughs> a bit more a bit more enforced uh, Cormac, uh, there's a few questions there for you in the comments. Yeah, Let's see if I can. Yeah. Do you yeah. the West of Ireland life or the brighter Mediterranean life? Yeah, um, yeah, it's funny um, because uh, the, 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 there's a, a real tradition of artists from the north, sort of going south, whether it was um, Van Gogh or um, you know, there's so many artists that have journeyed down. To, towards the light, and and there is a magical, there is a magic about about the southern light, uh, French Mediterranean light, or the or, or the light down in Spain. Um, it is a heightened light, and it is you know there is the blues are bluer, and the the, the ochres are, are, are you know you get that, that more intense color. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I suppose they're like holidays. You know the paintings themselves are like holidays. You know yeah. the, the, these ones behind me are from from that's a piece from Lisbon, and yeah. again. It's it's um it's a different it's, it is a different light beautiful coloured city actually Lisbon uh, it's 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 a pastel coloured city the older part of it is beautiful um and and, and it's 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 a, it is a holiday from the 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 Irish colour scheme which tends to be um uh you know we we do have a subdued colour scheme here which I actually love painting as well in fact I love that subdued yeah uh, colour you get in Ireland but it's great to get an excuse to to splash out you know, the the reds and the ochres every now and then. Mm -hmm. And there's another great work. Do you have a favourite painting of yours from Anna Wells? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's certain ones where, where you, you seem to, I, maybe they're more personal or, you know, maybe they're done at a particular time in your life. Um, it's, I certainly hang on to one or two of them because they might have a real personal um relevance to me um yeah i would certainly have favorites yeah which which is unusual yeah um, so is that, is that kind of hard to part with them when you're keeping it into the gallery and <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they're always the ones that go people immediately get it <laughs> they're, they're the first ones to go and you always have in the back of your head why did i you know i should have kept that one or you know uh, but people know i think people instinctively get it um you know if, if, if you have it, there's some connection. People seem to get it immediately, and um, they're the ones that always go. <laughs> that always go. So I, I keep a few hidden. Uh, what's the largest painting you have done, and why, from Adam to Bell? Yeah, um, it's it's only recently I've started doing bigger bigger work with that great studio space I have, and um, it. It does bring out the the kind of um, the megalomaniac in you. You do suddenly want to do these giant, giant paintings. Um, I, I I'm working on a a painting at the moment. It's just it's a beautiful it's a it's a long figure. Um, it's taking me um, it's taking me a couple of years to do it, but uh, it's it's a great challenge. Work, bigger work is great challenge, and they're actually in many ways they're easier to do because you're you're um, you've given yourself so much scope. You know. Um, it's like when when the uh, when the short story writers get a chance to to do a novel or something, they suddenly just you know they they, they throw everything into it and um, yeah they're 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 actually technically easy, nearly easier to do than like you could spend weeks on a tiny little canvas mm -hmm. as well. And so what the, what's size of it? Like roughly what size is that? And uh, well, the one the one I'm working on at the moment is about I think it's about five foot by. Um, by four foot, and I, I've worked at that size before. Um, uh, there's actually there's a there's a painting that was in the uh, was destined for the doorway uh, show we just had, but um, I, 
obviously we, we didn't we, we didn't get to have the proper open show yeah. in Dublin. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> we, we had we had a slight glitch, but um, yeah, the uh, the world the world uh, changed. But we I had a huge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a four foot by four foot uh, Spanish window, which was a beauty. You now, and, and I, I would love it to be seen eventually I in Dublin. Love that. Yes, that, I use that in all the advertising. Yeah, I thought that was a gorgeous piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was big. I mean, that was really big for me. It was it was a real uh, challenge, and I really enjoyed that one. Again, and how long did that take? Roughly. Sorry. How long would how long did that piece take you? Um, yeah, that, that could take. Uh, I mean, that could take weeks. You know, if I if I'm if I'm lashing into the canvas, I, I'll be putting on layers and layers of paint, and um, just the drawing and everything. Um, you know, it could take weeks to get those done. Um, but they're great. You know, as I say, they're great great fun to work on. You know, you can you can really splash out. And, um, and you know, you said you put lots of layers. So do you use a palette knife mainly, or would it be? A bit of both brush and palette knife. And um, I, I start off with brush, and I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll, I'll draw in a lot. A lot of drawing will go into the, with, with the brush. Um, and then when I put, when I get to the color, uh, particularly with those Spanish kind of ones, where you're, you're really yeah. want to get an intense. Uh, you want to get the, the, the reds and the uh, these colors jumping out against the blue sky. So. Um, yeah, I start lashing in with the canvas or, or with the with the palette knife, and um, in fact, I think I have. Oh yeah, they're just like these um, simple little knives. Here's one I have. Here, uh, you know, and yeah. they're um, they they just build up lovely layers, and it gets a lovely texture uh, on the canvas. Is that really what a lot of boards in your work because it's quite heavy with the palette knife, and you're squeezing into it. Yeah, yeah, they, they'll, um, the boards are great to work on because they build up a lovely, you get a great texture with the boards and they'll take a lot of, uh, they'll take layers and layers. The canvases are very sensitive, very soft to ground to work on. Um, and as a canvas can, can, you know, it can work quite easily and, and it can crack. Um, whereas the boards will take a lot, a lot of, uh, the boards are great to work on. I, I've, I've loads of little, little boards that I just, uh, I use in the studio. It's, it's a great way to work out ideas as well. Um, yeah. You know, with your, your Lisbon series, do you, do you use your drawings as a reference then when you get back to the studio, or do you use photographs as well? Yeah, there, there, there was a lot of uh, photographs used uh, when I was, it was basically nearly uh, the entire show was a, a view from a window. Um, one, one window, I'm just looking out, and um, so, it, it, but it kept changing, the light kept changing, and the, um, the, uh, you know, so uh, but I like the idea of just limiting myself to one view. Uh, and again, I took sketches, took sketches and, and photographs for, for color notes. Um, so it ended up again, uh, like I was saying earlier, it just it just took off, and I ended up maybe twenty yeah. paintings came out of that, uh, which was which was right. fantastic. So there's a good few questions there. Um, mm. Tina wants to know: Does poetry influence your work, and if so, which poets? Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of poetry. Um, being up here in, in Sligo, you're surrounded by um, Yeats. Yeats, there's a real Yeats uh, influence. Maybe we, we we learned a lot about it at school, and it kind of absorbed it because you're in the um, you're in the landscape that the, the, the paint the poet was was writing about. We were we were spoiled about you know in that regard. Uh, Glen Carr or Ross's Point or places like that are are actually mentioned a lot in his poetry. In Yeats's uh, poetry and um, so it's interesting when you're in that landscape, and it to, I mean, to us it was a place to, to go and play, or you know, to go and, and explore. Uh, so it, it's it's fantastic to have that link. Um, so I would I would return to certain places. Um, actually, that that other painting with the deer uh, there is is based on a oh, is based well, on a gate. Fiona Wallace is just asking about the deer painting behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it's it's yeah it's, it's based on um, a Yeats poem. It was based on the poem where where, where the deer, um, the stag, and the meets the salmon. Um, you can just see it there leaping. Um, so so poetic poetic um, ideas do do trigger it can trigger paintings. Um, you know I was involved in the Yeats themed show a few years ago, and it 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 gave me great 
uh, it gives you great ideas. Actually, you're always looking around for some inspiration as an artist. So um, it's great to, to tune into poetry, even contemporary poetry that's happening now. And there's great imagery there. And it's great, great, uh, great inspiration, definitely. And would you, do you title your paintings on the back of the poems as well? Or how do you title the to your work? Um, yeah, the t I mean, sometimes titles can, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, 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 would, I, I like the link. I like people to get a link between the title and the painting. Um, you know, it can be, it can be really interesting. Um, you know, sometimes it's just a place, but, you know, so many paintings are just based on places and um, rather than giving them, you know, the same title, maybe one to ten, um, it's nice to give, to give maybe a, some other dimension to it. Uh, uh, maybe more emotional or, or personal uh, link to, to the to the painting then. Um, so it's and actually yeah, poetry has always been a great source for for, for, for if you're stuck artists. Uh, it's a great source for for titles for paintings. I've always found. Yeah, I actually yeah, there's a lot of artists that do that. I mean, there, yeah, the paintings from yeah. poetry. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and then another question: Who are your influences? Or washing. Yeah. Sorry, washing. <laughs> yeah. So well, you, I mean, you could do the two questions in one if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're you're taking you're taking influences all the time. I mean, as a painter, I'm I'm always looking at painters. Um, you know, contemporary people and people from the past. Um, you know, I was looking at lucky to get to to see some of the great um. Uh, exhibit, you know the great, great galleries and the great museums, and you 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 stand in front of uh, you know Matisse and Castle and you know Rembrandt and all these people, and you're you're suddenly blown away by them, and you, you realize that, that my God, they were you know they were amazing, and you get to see the work up, up close, and you can see all the layers and all the different colors and um, the tones and the way that they would have you can kind of imagine how they painted these things and them. Um, so it's it's yeah I mean I, I would be constantly inf being influenced by um, you know all the great artists um, you know a lot of French artists Matisse Nicolas de Staël and um, I was very lucky to see the Bonnard um, uh, exhibition in London recently uh, what was it, last year last year um, just beautiful oh it was stunning it was it was it was literally like being lost in time you know you were you were suddenly transported to the south of France in the 1920s. And it was stunning. So those kind of things do influence your work. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. They're definitely uh, inspiring. I noticed with, with your, your, your work as well, you do a variety of different boards and canvases and canvas um, sheets. Well, how do you just like how do you decide what what material you're going to use when you're when you start a piece? Or is that just whatever there, you'll use it. <laughs> How does it work? Yeah. Well, it can be. It can be. Uh, it can be whatever is around. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it, it, I mean, I, 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 I use. Uh, I cut up panels of, of board, um, which are actually from a hardware. This is a terrible thing to admit. They're from a hardware store because I find um, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the ones from the art shop are only in certain sizes and. Um, Okay. Whereas when I have my own boards, I can chop them up into any any size I want, and uh, they can be great for just for just working out compositions. And then I, I can stretch the canvases myself. These are the, they are stretched. I stretch the oh, canvases okay. myself, okay. Which, which, which I really enjoy doing. A lot of artists don't like doing that, yeah. but um, I actually yeah. really enjoy it. It's, it's a nice part, and yeah, you get to you get to stand down the you know prepare yeah. the canvas and all the background work as well. That's therapeutic, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Anna Wells, do you listen to music whilst painting, or do you find background noise distracting? Um, well, I've all, no, I always have music on, and um, it's funny, I was talking to a writer about this, and he said uh, he cannot have any music on because words, I suppose it's more... more uh, it's more focused or something when, when you're writing, but when you're painting, it's okay. I can have music on in the background. It's great. Um, you know, anything, uh, jazz, classical, uh, the radio, pop music on the radio, anything. Um, it's actually nice to have it in the background. Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, the silence can be a bit, it can be a bit much, um, particularly when you're on your own in the studio. It's, it's nice to have a bit of a background. 
What type yeah. of what type of background music do you listen to? Um, I, I listen to anything. Um, uh, oh, just absolutely anything. Um, I have a very large cassette collection from the nineteen eighties, <laughs> which I still which I still listen to. Um, <laughs> you know, all, all kinds of music, jazz, um, pop pop music, rock music. You know, I'm I'm a big fan of of, of everything really. So it's great to have those mixtapes, those old mixtapes. Yeah. Running. Yeah. Um, because you don't know what's going to come up in the but it does yeah, it does it does help you. I, I definitely think it's a it's it's a real um yeah, it's a, it's it's nice to have in the background. Mm -hmm. As I say, you're you're on your own a lot, so so uh, even yeah. even having the radio <laughs> the radio as well. Um I just see this uh, if anyone wants to ask Cormac a question, just type it in the comments and we'll keep uh firing them at you. Um mm. What I want to know is, Matt, do you always work in oils, or do you, do you use anything else? Um, yeah, I, 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 I remember going through a stage where I used acrylic a lot, um, and it was just, um, I had a tiny studio. It was a bedroom, actually. It was very small, and I, I couldn't use the, the fumes from, from the oil paints. Yeah. They were a bit too much. So I, I used the water-based acrylics, and they were great. Um, they they have a great texture, you know. They suited my painting actually, uh, putting on layers, and they dry very very quickly. And um, so so they were great to use. But I I think oils are just so there's so much depth you can get with oils, and yeah. you know there's a lovely atmosphere you can get. I found I found eventually acrylics uh, very hard to use. They they just didn't have the same depth or quality mm. as the oil paint. Yeah, a lot of people say that. And, and yeah, do you make your own oils, or do you do you mix them yourself, or do you buy them? Um, oh yeah, I I I'd, I'd buy them. I'd get them from the from the local um, art, art store. I mean, I know there are some artists who actually I've seen them. You know, they they get the pigments and yeah. they make their own. And it's it, it, that's that's another process. Um, but no, I, I haven't I haven't gone down that route yet. I mean, I've seen the pigment can be beautiful if you just buy the the powder itself. It's amazing. I know. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's so vivid. Um, I haven't gone down that route yet, though. I'm still just um, getting the paints myself. But it's great when you when you get a I have friends sometimes might send me um, an odd color that I've never you know seen before, or you know you might get a different quality paint from different different manufacturers, and it's great to get stuff like that. Uh, someone, uh, poor Carl. Hi, Paul. What brand of oil paint do you use? Um, oh right. Well, it's probably a mixture. God, it's probably everything. Uh, <laughs> it's probably Windsor and Newton and um, and and uh, oh, yeah, all of them. Winton, all of them. Uh, I, I did win years ago. I, I won a, a great prize from the Millican Brothers, um, yeah. and it was it was it was a very different kind of paint. It was all made in a little factory up in the north, and. Uh, it was really amazing. I, 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 I mean, they're quite, they're very, very expensive to, to get. And I, mm. I, I, um, I was very lucky to get this prize, which was a, a big, uh, basically a giant collection of their colors. And uh, yeah. so things like that can be great. So they just change your color scheme as well. But for the most part, it's it's the Windsor Newtons and the, uh, yeah, the the uh, Rather and Downey and the the, the 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 regular paints, the art supply. So another Lorraine Sherry, do you paint every day and would you be a morning or evening painter or do you do office hours? So you were kind of mentioning at the start how you try to just fit it in whenever you can now with the kids around. <laughs> it's all changed. Yeah, it's um yeah, it's whenever you can really. I mean whenever you can. I mean that it's it's literally like a but I mean, you will get a run of of hours where where you're free and um, you know. Uh, I mean, when yeah, um, the kids were at school, I suppose that's when you really got most of your work done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it was literally I was in between the school, the school runs uh, would be the most intense period of work, and um, somebody was saying that to me. He said, "Don't be, you know, don't be sitting around waiting for inspiration, or you'll be, you know, you'll never get anything done. Just go yeah. in and and." Start start immediately messing around with paints, even if you don't. Use the days yeah. when you don't want to do yeah. that, so yeah. you feel you, you know, and then something will gradually gradually happen. Uh, 
it usually ends up that way. And, uh, and there's another question. Uh, the paint, Paul Walker, I like the painting behind me. So that one is, that's part of the new collection, the Unseen Works, um, Echo Lake. So is that anywhere in particular or? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it, well, it's based on an actual place, um, but the kids came up with this name uh, because they used to shout uh, and their, you know, their voices would echo across the lake. Oh. We, so we go, we go for walks with them and it's this tiny lake uh, way up in the, the mountains here. And uh, we figured, I mean, everybody probably, it's probably got a proper name, um, but I just, yeah. just, I love that title. The title stuck with me and the idea. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's this little mysterious right, actually. yeah that you can relate it to that you know it's yeah, yeah really nice um let me see trying just to read the questions what does the typical working day look like in your artistic practice um well uh, yeah well uh, it used to look like um uh, you know before things change so much, uh, you know, you get in early and you'd, you'd, as I say, between the school runs, you would, um, you would concentrate on getting as much work done, be, you know, between nine and, and four o'clock or so. Um, and, and that was really your, your most productive period. And then maybe in the evenings as well, um, particularly if you, have, if you have a show coming up, you tend to just really just lock yourself away for hours and uh, try and get as much work done as you can. Um, yeah. I mean, that's gone out the window now, but, uh, you know, it, 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 hopefully it will come back. Um, there's, a, there's a question there from Trudy Good. So this body of work seems to have a lot of energy in the way you've been applying the paint. There's a very hmm. dynamic quality to the surface texture, although you still manage to maintain that stillness that I know in your work. Do your work. Hmm. Was this a conscious decision that you've made regarding the way you have worked? And it's probably it's probably just happened. Um, maybe maybe it's the uh, the, the current circumstances. <laughs> but sometimes, um, yeah, you know, I have a limited time. Maybe so I'm probably working more intensely. Um, you know, I, I probably realise uh, you might I might have a few hours here, a few hours there. So. Mm -hmm. Within that time constraint, I, I probably really focused on, on getting a few small pieces done, and and, and 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 they're always a bit fresher as well when when they're you know they're new. I think in your head um, when, you're, when you're going into a new body of work, there's there's a spontaneity about them, and they become a bit more exciting. I think, and it certainly reflects that. I think people you know people get that when they see them. Do you, yeah, ever, well. do you ever paint plein air? Do you with, with any of the works? I know you draw and you have sketchbooks, but do you ever do yeah. that? Um, I've done a bit of that. Yeah, I, I, I did a bit. It's funny down in Kerry, I did, um, and I really, I really got into it. I, and I normally don't do that. I usually it's always in the studio. Mm -hmm. I always take things, you know, into the studio, and it's, it's. I, I kind of start messing around with them there. Um, uh, so yeah, Dan and Kerry, I did some little, I did watercolors actually, which is again very different for me. Uh, I didn't, I don't exhibit them now or anything, but um, they're, they're almost just done as, 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 a, as you know, to take notes, you know, and, and to enjoy the, uh, to just get ideas from the landscape around you. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually very refreshing because you're very close to nature, you're very close to the weather, and you're feeling the, you know, the rain <laughs> usually hitting you are or the sun or whatever. So it does change your aspect of your your your, your view of the kind of work you make. Oh, Katrina has a really good question. How do you know yeah. when you're finished a piece? Oh yes, well that is very good. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> oh, well, it's, all it's, such that. it's such a good, yeah, how do you know? <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. Somebody, I think it was, um, it was with the cooling said, you, you, you never finish a painting, you just abandon it. And, yeah. um, I think that's good good advice because you can you know you can sometimes overwork things, um, so it's good it's good to just maybe uh, keep it fresh as well. You're always trying to keep painting fresh and and alive. So that there's always that little point where you might just you know just overwork it. So I think that's it. You kind of do know really. You do you do sense it. Um, uh, you know. That, that, that 
once you know it could be overworked very easily. So it's it's just that it's that thin line. Can you leave <laughs> them in the for a while and then go back and then revisit them and go back again? Is it? Yeah, or, yeah. You automatically know, and then that's it. You won't touch it anymore, or. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a stage where you just let them hang. Uh, you hang I have to hang them on the wall in the studio, and I just let them sit there for a while, and um, quite literally, uh, you know, just just leave them for a while. I wouldn't go near them. I don't paint. I don't touch them or anything. And then after maybe a few days or a few weeks, you feel yeah, that's okay to go. That's 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 um, that one has that. That's, so you know. You, uh, do you um, like working? We always have exhibition dates and we booked your 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 show this year we booked two years ago. Um mm. do you like having that date or does it does it give you a goal or do you feel under pressure or do you do you like when seeing the exhibition all together? Um yeah I it's yeah it's, it's no I think it's great to have the deadline um because otherwise you know I'd be in there <laughs> I'd just be in there messing around for, for weeks and weeks. No, it's great. It focuses your mind, definitely. Um, you know that there's got to be 20 or 30 paintings and they've got to make sense in some kind of way. Um, and it, it focuses your mind. It's great because you, 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 begin to, you, know, you can get a team together. You can then, you know, sort of work. I tend to work in a series. So mm. uh, five or six paintings together. You know, I like them all to sit well together. Um, and it's great. Yeah, it, does, it does focus your mind. Um, as I say, otherwise I'd be um, I'd be messing around in there for for you know months without producing anything. <laughs> <laughs> what what is your favorite series? Do you remember? I mean, just one stick in your head. A, a favorite which? Your favorite series of work that you've done. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah, uh, yeah. There's, there's some. Um, well, I did I did a series of years ago, and I people still ask me about them. They were just the Spanish windows. Oh, it was a view yeah. of uh, an old apartment uh, building, mm. and you're looking down into uh, other other uh, other buildings. And I just did the simple um, balcony and the window. And it, it, for some reason, I mean, I really enjoyed them, and they remind they're very much they were kind of remind me of a of a, of a great time and a happy time. And uh, people still ask about them, and they they were a lovely little series. But I knew I, I could only do so many. You know, they begin mm. to get a bit. Um, Overworked, um, but yeah, it was a lovely little series. Uh, it's a lovely series. So, so you do, you do have. I mean, they're like snapshots in time, really. You know, they yeah, the series they do remind you of a certain. They might remind you of a certain person yeah. or a certain yeah. or a certain uh, time in your life. So it's always interesting to look back, actually, and mm -hmm. uh, they are they are like little moments in time, really. Yeah, it's like, it's like a diary, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, when you look back uh, on your work, you do see it in those terms, and they remind you of places you lived, or you know, different circumstances you were in, or people that have you know passed on, or whatever. You know, they're all linked with, with something I think in your life, uh, even though to the outside viewer it might be just a landscape or a uh, you know a nice still life or something. But you know, the, I think for the artists they have a, a special link. They always have some link with their own with their own time and, and life. What about the, the the blue bather, the French bather? That that I remember that too. So what was yeah. the idea behind that? Yeah, well, I, I I was looking at Bonnard a lot, and um, he had that series. Well, obviously that theme was was in his life. Uh, he, he, he but I I just thought it was a beautiful, um, very very beautiful image, uh, and it was. A, a, they became very uh, simplified. Uh, I remember the colours, of course, were very, very simplified. Um, and they had a certain atmosphere, yeah, they had a very kind of, a, I felt it was a real atmosphere in those. Um, and yeah, they captured something. Um, yeah, I, I was very fond of that series. And again, it was inspired by, uh, I suppose, seeing Bonnard's work as well. Uh, it just it just re resonated with me in my, in my mind. Uh, this is, and the, the fact that the figure is alone and she's uh, it's, it's usually at night and it's it's quite a it's quite a, a sort of a solitary moment. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They so they also always sold really well. Would you would you ever go back to a series, or is once it's done that's it? You're not going to do that that bather again, or? Um, I think I think sometimes you return to. Um, I was just I was looking at 
I've had some time to look in the studio actually recently at old uh, work, and you do you do kind of go back, you know, you you, you sometimes revisit um, certain themes, you know, like maybe the still life or the an interior or you know, like a view from a window, or and you might do a different a different version of it, or or um, but yeah, you, sometimes you you do actually go back, but I, I again as I say, you don't want to overwork a theme. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it works nicely for for a few series, and you just kind of leave it at that. Um, but, you know, and how do you feel about commissioned work? If somebody did want to play there, would you be happy to do it? Or um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can commissions. Are, uh, commissions can be interesting. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah. I've done that, and and uh, I suppose it has it has to still you know, maybe take a different view or a different angle or. Um, just to keep keep the image refreshed, I suppose you, you you might take a different view of it or a different angle or, or use a different style or something. Um, but yeah, it has happened to you occasionally. Do you occasionally will get people who might ask uh, for a commission from a particular series. Um, and sometimes that can be difficult because, as, as I say, they, they're from another time uh, and another place. Or maybe, but you know, you can revisit it. Yeah, it can be it can be managed all right sometimes. But you, but you, you're not, you're not particularly fond of doing going back and doing it. It's yeah, it's, it's different. It can be difficult actually. Yeah, it can be difficult. Um, you know, like as I say, those. I remember the the series I did of the apartments in Barcelona are, are from such a time. You know, in my own kind of thinking of a certain period in time, and uh, it would be quite difficult to re to, to get that atmosphere again. Um. And then you know, like the new paint, a series done from Lisbon. You know, it's a certain period of, of time in your life, um, and I think just to keep the ideas fresh. You say, I'm always, I suppose, I'm always trying to keep the ideas fresh uh, visually. Um, uh, so I, I would find it difficult to keep, you know, replication the same image over and over again. No, I totally agree, and I think that's why people look forward to your exhibitions because it's always new. It's a new theme. It's a new idea. Mm. Is there another few questions there for you, Cormac? Do you use the same framer all the time? Elizabeth wants to know. Um, uh, yeah, uh, framers. I, I've over the years I've used different framers. Um, it's <laughs> sometimes um, uh, very experimental framing, and sometimes I, you know, just really plain. Um, and sometimes I don't frame them at all. The canvases can just hang uh, the really big ones with, with no. Um, you know, no, I don't think they, some of them don't need frames, yeah. but it depends again on the uh, the setting and the, sometimes uh, certainly for paper pieces or anything that's delicate, it's really important to get a good frame and get good protection. Um, but I tend to use very simple framing and very simplified, you know. Yeah. Very well, simple you, framing. You want the painting to speak for itself. You don't need. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, people might. Have, you know, when you hear, when you hear people talking about the frames at your exhibition, you do get a bit worried. I know, I, everyone goes back. <laughs> um, here's a, what, Ronan O'Leary wants to know which you prefer to paint with, a palette knife or brush? Well, that's a very good question, Ronan, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I, I suppose I prefer the, eventually I love using the knife, I just love using layers of paint and it's like, um, you know, it's like it, you know, a big slab of of, um, of, of red paint is, is extraordinary. It just jumps out at you, um, or, or or the blues or anything like that. You know, the, the color seems to be more vivid and more alive uh, when I put it on in layers like that. I could never get the same effect with brushes. I tried, I often try, but it just doesn't seem to come alive as much for me. Um, I, I really envy other artists that can do that. They, they seem to have that. Facility with, with brushes, but I, I just never seem to get that. I just enjoy the, um, I suppose, the lusciousness of the paint and the, you know, the real, the, the qualities of the thickness of the paint in more. Uh, so, so yeah, I prefer to use the brush. I'm sorry, I prefer to use the the knife. Uh, Roman. Uh, what inspires you? Your local, your family, your neighbourhood. Another question. In? Um, yeah, I, th I think it all goes in there. Um, it, 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 it all it all goes into your. I mean, I think um, 
Tony O'Malley said, um, you, you, can, you can put anything into a painting, the argument you just had with your partner, the, um, the, the, the awful day you just had, you can put that in if you want, you know, everything goes in there. Um, I mean, I, I think I'd, I'd, probably, uh, I'd probably go for a more inspirational um, imagery in that. I, I try to, uh, it's, 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 I suppose, more personal in, in, in many respects, but it's also more positive. I try, try to create more positive imagery. Uh, you can't always do that, but um, most of the time, painting is more celebration for me. It's, 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 uh, it's, you want it to be a celebratory thing, you, you know, a, a, uh, more life affirming, I suppose. So I think all your all your life experiences will go into a painting, definitely. Uh, and and can I ask you about what what portion like that we did this whole in a sheer um, collection as well, and they were kind of darker ones, but they always sold for me anyway. They sold quite quickly. Um, mm. but that was just spent a bit of time there, was it, or how how did that come about? Yeah, well, we we spent some I spent some time there, uh, not not very long now, but but just enough time to um, to absorb the the atmosphere of the place. And um, I think there's something romantic and very uh, just very very powerful about the islands. You know, I just think the Aran Islands and the 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 islands that have survived uh, off the coast of Ireland. There's such there's such a ruggedness there and so much history. And um, that all goes into a painting. I, I the, the um, that shipwreck. On in a year really struck me, and I know loads of painters have gone, uh, have you, have gone, have been attracted to that, to the shape of it. It's like it's like a it's like an amazing sculpture that's mm -hmm. just been you know, plunked there in the middle of the of the coast. Um, so I, I was drawn to that, um, and I think I, I I think it's just such a striking image. You know, it's impossible to avoid it. It was very atmospheric, um, and yeah, I found it, I found it very moving, kind of, and the survive the fact that people were surviving in this. I have survived for centuries on this little island, um, but it, it, it always, it always, you know, there's something about islands and there's something about those places that draw me back. They always draw me back to them. Do you do many artists' residencies, residencies around Ireland, or do you prefer to just do your do your own travels and find whatever you find along the way? Um, it's it's a kind of, a kind of a mixture. I mean, the the residency are great because you you know you you can't you just have to paint and draw. You you, you have no distractions. Um, Kilre League is a great place. I've been there a few times um, down in Kerry, um, and you're literally. Are you gone? <laughs> Must I think he's gone. <laughs> I'm just going to see. And this is the problem with, with the internet down there. <laughs> oh, no. Can you come back, Cormac? Can you hear us? <laughs> Maybe he's left on purpose. <laughs> Let me just see. Oh, well, this is the, the problem, I suppose, that we've just run into with live chats. <laughs> oh, he's just gone. I'm, he's, he's probably going to connect back in if I can get him back on. Sorry about this. Uh, difficult technical issues. <laughs> and, uh, um, no, I can't seem to get him. If we do get Cormac back, <laughs> um, I will go back on live. But for now, we'll have to sign off, I think. Um, there's no sign of him. Tell the kids to get off the Wi-Fi. Oh, he's back. Here he is. Yeah, I think uh, I think yeah. the kids back on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> I, I don't know. We just got zapped. We just got zapped there. Sorry about that. We just yeah. got there. Uh, <laughs> Are you okay? Our first uh, technical. Uh, <laughs> Super glitch. Sorry about that. Oh dear. 
no internet in Lisa, so I was just there. But we, um, I've got a really good question here, actually, and it's uh, from Cal. What do you look for in painting your interior scene? Yeah, um, I suppose it's it's, it's the. Uh, I mean, they're they're very much studies in light and shade, and um, you know, atmospherics. Um, uh, they are. Uh, I suppose a lot of the interiors I've done are based on on rooms I would have associated with. And uh, past or you know older uh, rooms. I, I did a series based on actually my grandmother's room in Cork uh, living room where we lived. I lived down there for for, for many years in the in the, in the house, uh, very old house. And uh, I just I love the atmosphere, you know, and, and the simplicity of the of the of the interior. So you do you try and get an atmosphere, uh, and again it's all down to the light and shade. Um, and the particular atmosphere you're trying to get from convey in a place. Another question: Are you planning on a trip away for inspiration after the lockdown? Um, yes, I'm, I'm compiling a long list of places. <laughs> um, I, I think I think everybody yeah. must be at this stage. Yeah. Um, What's you your know, first, I, I just, what the top one that you want yeah. to go? To? There's just so many. I mean, we, we were. I was trying to get back to Paris and places like that. I mean, I just miss. It's great to tour these uh, places like Paris and uh, or London, or and just get to see the great art collections there. Um, you know, you you really do get inspired. You just get so inspired by these places. Um, and there's an embarrassment of riches in them. Uh, you know, for an artist. Uh, so I, I I'm, I'm compiling a list. Yes, a long list of um of places to go. There was um. Yeah, there's some shows in London I'd love to see, and um, yeah, there's so many things that, that I'd like to reconnect with, definitely. Um, so some nice, uh, funny comments. <laughs> Katrina wants to know how you can buy your work. Well, that's to us. You can get to a gallery for sure. <laughs> um, Dan, no, uh, that's another. Are you, yeah, no, I think you've actually answered it all. Hmm. Yeah, and really nice comments from everyone saying they love your new work. So, yeah, thank you. It's been uh, really good to get you back as well. Yes, yeah, I thought it was lost there. I thought it was gone. <laughs> lost in space. I was lost in space for a bit there. Um, well, thank you so much, Cormac. It was such a nice yep. And uh, I hope everyone really enjoyed uh, getting to know Cormac this week. All the works are on our um, And the app can be downloaded from the website if anyone wants to try the, the pages on the wall. Uh, the app is from uh, um, our website designers who have just spent the last couple of years designing it. So uh, try it out. And Cormac. We look forward to the next one, the next class. <laughs> okay, please. Thank you. Take care. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye. Bye now.